welcome back to my channel. I am here to film another sassy video from me. I just get really excited about filming these videos, guys. I feel like they're definitely like wildly popular on YouTube right now. I feel like I've been sassy since the day I was born. Um, and so uh, I'm about to impart some of my sass on the internet. So if you guys are here to see what I think brands should do in 2018. So this is kind of a video where I'm like, things I'm kind of sick of seeing them do, things I wish they would do, brands that I wish would just like die. I'm not gonna name particular brands, but just like trends I wish would die as far as like the makeup industry or the makeup community, then uh, just keep watching. Okay guys, so I actually sat down and wrote myself a list. This is my YouTube notebook. I've had this one for quite some time. As you can see, these are all the video ideas I've done. This is where I'm at right now. So yeah, I've done a lot of work on YouTube, but I also keep notes on my phone so I had written down two that I know I wanted to talk about as well in this video so let's talk about all of it the so. first thing I wrote down is brands need to expand their shade ranges in already existing products now I get so tired of talking about this stuff because I feel like everyone's already talked about it but I just wanted to point out like one example that really irks me is Benefit because Benefit has Hula, which is a very popular bronzer. And then I think last year or the year prior, they came out with Hula Light. Now, the part that pisses me off is why haven't they come out with Hula Tan, Hula Dark, Hula Deep Dark? Like, why is it that they came out with a shade lighter for lighter skin tones? And uh, they don't feel the need to come out with like a hula tan or a hula deep. I just feel like that's really messed up on their part. And it really, 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 really pisses me off when I see big influencers supporting their brand. And it's like, come on, like, that's so unfair. That's so blatantly discriminating against darker skin tone. I just wish brands would just across the board if you're going to do something like hula light then you really need to be mindful of your audience and create more shades i mean it doesn't all have to come out at once but i feel like throw me a bone here somewhere benefit it's just it's sad benefit just really stands out to me because i actually had the hula bronzer and i don't like it i don't like it on my skin tone i know a lot of people my shade and even a little bit darker than me try to pull it off but I feel like that's more of a hype thing they think that it's like this great bronzer but I promise you guys there's better bronzers out there so pass on that and uh, do better benefit please and like any other brand that just does like oh let me just do the lighter version first like that's so messed up that's so messed up to me so um, second thing that I wish would stop happening in the beauty community this isn't really directed at brands but this is more so at beauty influencers and I just want to say I'm sick of the bandwagoners I'm so sick of influencers that don't have a brain of their own and then this big controversy happens and then they're like on the bandwagon and they're like oh my gosh i believe in like all brands having multiple shades and this is 2018 guys and we need more shades so there's a few influencers that just come to mind but i don't really want to sit here and call people out but you guys probably know and i just think it's so silly that these people are like decluttering their Tarte products and stuff. If you want to declutter your Tarte, just throw it in the freaking trash because you can't really sell it. That means you're just like trying to recoup some of the money you spent on it because I don't even know what the logic is with the whole Tarte situation, especially all the Caucasian beauty gurus are driving me crazy because it's like, oh, so now you're going to call out Tarte, but you guys are still going to buy It Cosmetics, Physicians Formula, Neutrogena, Alme. Like, a lot of the high, high-end brands like Duo and Laura Mercier and just brands that don't cater to my skin tone and even people that are ultra-light or ultra-dark or just tan. Ooh, I hate the bandwagoners. I just hate all types of bandwagoners. I hate all the YouTubers that are just like, Ooh, they're mad at this brand, so I'm gonna be mad at that brand too. It's just like, think for yourself and do what you want. Like, don't sit there and get mad at somebody or a brand because every bigger YouTuber is like criticizing them or whatever. So I'm getting really, 
I sound more heated than I am. I just think it's funny. I just think the bandwagoners are really funny and kind of a joke at this point. So I, I'm not saying anything bad towards people that actually like feel like they're making a difference in this world. I do think that it's great that people called out Tarte, but what about all the other brands, guys? I mean, if we're going to bandwagon, let's, let's get on the total bandwagon and just like boycott it cosmetics. You know what I'm saying? Okay, guys, point number three, things I would like to see indie brands do for 2018 is kind of expand their product range. I feel like a lot of indie brands start off with their eyeshadows, single shadows, eyeshadow palettes, those big magnetic palettes. I've seen a lot of those. I've seen liquid lipsticks done, but I would really like to see them go into like blushes and definitely some contour slash bronzer shades, especially from brands like Juvia's Place where they do cater to women of color. I think there is definitely a big, big market for women of color having more complexion products. I would love to see them come out with an affordable foundation range and I think I'd like to see that with a lot of the indie brands that I'm already familiar with like Colored Rain. Those are the two big ones that I can just think of that are constantly cranking out new products, especially in the eyeshadow realm, but I'd love to see them do more complexion, different products, and just widen their brand, more eyeliners, different colors, more unique stuff. So yeah, that's what I would like to see from indie brands in 2018. So what I would like from the beauty community in 2018, one of the things I would like is for people to stop complaining about how many products a company is launching. Specifically, I feel like a lot of people, when you think about it, it's ColourPop because they basically have something new come out every week and some people are annoyed with them because they have FOMO and they don't wanna miss out on buying something so they feel like they're continuously buying stuff from them. Other people just, you know, want to avoid the temptation. There's many reasons why I think people don't like that they come out with new stuff, but I think what I've kind of mastered with ColourPop is I just, I know what products from them I like, and then when I see them come out with something that I like and I'm familiar with, I don't really hesitate to buy. I love buying their palettes. I feel like they're such great value for money. But usually I don't buy any of their individual items for the most part. I have a pretty intense Super Shock Shadow collection. So I've told myself like I really just don't need any more and it's such a waste of money because I don't even use the ones I have. So I've weaned myself off of that, but I just get so frustrated with people complaining about how ColourPop is constantly coming out with stuff because I feel like they're so affordable and I feel like there's a lot of brands cranking stuff out right now. Like I talked about it in my Will I Buy It video. I'm so worried about Viseart because I feel like they've really lost their unique pro makeup brand appeal. I feel like they're trying really hard to mass market themselves and I feel like they're coming out with product after product after product and it's a little bit alarming because they are such a well known brand for being not luxurious but just really catering to that pro market and it just like bothers me that they're trying to keep up with these like fast makeup brands and then also I feel like as much as I love Juvia's Place I do feel like they are constantly cranking out new products. I think most brands are guilty of that so the fact that Colourpop is the only one that like constantly gets called out on it I feel like is a little bit unfair and I do think that us as consumers also need to take ownership that we can choose not to buy stuff like <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good at it but you do have that choice so yeah I just hope people complain a little bit less about how much products some um, makeup brands come out with and I do think part of it is innovation and I feel like Colourpop obviously has come out with some really cool products that are affordable I think they definitely make more good products than bad. There are a few products from them that I just will never buy, like their eyeliners, liquid and the pencil, or like their pot liners and their pencil liners I don't particularly like. There's a lot of things from them I won't buy, but that's just part of being um, mindful of what your makeup needs are and things like that. I don't think we should just blame ColourPop for how much we consume. Okay, number five. I 
really, really would like for brands to, especially drugstore brands, actually this is specifically for drugstore brands, I wish drugstore brands would make it easier for consumers to find their products. I feel like the pattern I've seen is usually the new stuff comes to Ulta, then maybe like Walgreens if we get lucky, then we'll see it trickle into Walmart and Target. And I'm sure there's a strategy behind it, like there's like exclusive agreements where it needs to launch at Ulta first and then it can go into Walmart and Target probably because they make like more profit margins or something when they go into Ulta. But I think it just makes it really unfair for the consumer because it makes it so hard for me to track down products, especially being a YouTuber and a makeup reviewer. I, I love trying out new products and when they make it hard to find, it's just really obnoxious. Like I don't want to order online I want to be able to go into store and like look at a collection and decide what I'm going to purchase so I really really wish drugstore brands would try a little bit harder to make their products more accessible and also I feel like when you see the display there's only a few items and then once those are sold out they're gone so I think they should try a little bit harder to make it easier for us to find their makeup products okay so I don't think a lot of brands are guilty of this this year or even towards the end of last year I really didn't see this happening very much but I remember at one point in the beauty industry this was huge where brands had makeup launches and things would just sell out like people would literally be getting anxiety setting alarms losing sleep over makeup launches and it was crazy like I remember at one point probably in 2016 where I just remember like these MAC cosmetics launches, some of the limited edition stuff, like people would stay up till the product went live and I would never do that, but oh my gosh, it was insane. I did do it a couple of times when I think I did it for a few different things this past in 2017 that were launching because I was worried like it would sell out, but I feel like companies have kind of done a good job of not having things sell out right away, so that's really great. I've seen improvement there, but if you guys know of any brands that you still kind of see this happening, I'd be curious to hear, but I remember a time where it was really bad. Like I definitely had a few alarms set to wake up to pick up some products so that that's pretty freaking horrible <laughs> if you ask me we shouldn't have to do that for makeup it's ridiculous okay another thing I think this isn't something I'm sure of if I don't like or like but a lot of like previews and like pre-sales I think those are interesting because I don't know if it's like brands are doing it out of the goodness of their heart because they're like oh there's like a core group of our customers that love us so so much we want them to get the product in hand in advance so we're gonna do like a limited launch for like a day so they can get their hands on the product and play with it I feel like it's more so let's get a few people that are on top of their makeup game to buy our palette then they can advertise it for us basically free advertising I'm gonna try and say that that's not what makeup brands are doing that they're not scheming but Really, from a marketing standpoint, that's like really the only good reason I can think of of them to do like a pre-launch type deal. Now, I love to partake in these pre-releases because it's a great way for me to get my hands on the product and test it out before it's out. It's out in the beauty community, so it kind of gives me like a little bit of a head start, which I'm not gonna complain about. But in reality, is it necessary? Probably not. Like. If you have the product, why don't you just launch it to everyone? Why are you making people wait? I feel like that's a little bit strange. So yeah, that's something I would like to explore more. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, please leave them in the comments because I'd be so curious to hear what you guys have to say on that particular topic. Okay, another thing I would like to change about the beauty industry is international launches. I do watch quite a few international beauty gurus and like YouTube channels and I feel really bad that they don't have the same access to makeup as people here in the United States. I am lucky to be here so I get to take advantage of a lot of the launches. Granted there are some times where indie brands or you know specific brands in other countries will do launches and it's hard for me to get a hold of but nine times out of ten it's harder for people that are not in the United States to get a hold of 
makeup products and I think that's a little bit unfair. I think a lot of brands should, you know, try their best to expand into international shipping and offering a wide variety of options. I think it is 2018. There is no reason for people in other countries to miss out on makeup, especially if they have the means to afford it. I don't see why they should be excluded or why when big, big brands like Too Faced or Tarte or Becca launch something, in the US that it's not launched at the same time across the globe or at least in some bigger markets that are not the United States. Okay, another thing I would like to have beauty brands change is website exclusives. I really don't get it. I know it's a marketing ploy. It's so that you'll shop on their website versus shopping on like a Sephora.com or like an Ulta or a Beautylish or a Beauty Bay. I personally think web exclusives aren't enough of a draw for me to get me to shop online. Mostly I don't even hear about the website exclusives, nor do I really care, but it's just annoying. It's just like, why don't you make the collection available across all forms of distribution? It really bothers me because sometimes it's like, oh, we're gonna do it here, but maybe like, for example, something launches exclusively at Sephora. What if I have an Ulta gift card? Like, come on, but I get it. It's all about the bottom line. And when it comes to the bottom line, having exclusive products probably helps boost profits and that's why they do it but this is my list so I can complain about everything that I want to complain about so there's that okay another thing I would really like to see change about makeup brands is better return policies I think a lot of the reason why brands brand exclusive websites don't generate a lot of traffic is most of them have really crappy exchange policies I think I feel like Tarte I'm about 90% sure you can't return stuff when you buy from Tarte.com. I'm not sure because I haven't bought anything from Tarte in a while, but I feel like if I was able to return stuff, I would have definitely returned like that gross Rainforest of the Sea foundation that I don't like that I purchased a while ago. I mean, it's not recent, but I'm just saying at that time, if they had a good return policy, I would have probably returned it. I think some brands do it really well. I know, for example, I was very easily able to return the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. They always send you a return label, which I think is really cool. Like, it's 2018. There shouldn't be a reason why somebody can't exchange a product that they purchased on your website. Like, I work for a really small business and even we allow exchanges just for customer satisfaction. Like, people have the right to return stuff and we shouldn't be like, oh, you purchased this on our website, so therefore you can't return it. Like, that makes no freaking sense and I just disagree with brands doing that to their consumers. Something I would like to see as a makeup connoisseur is price matching. I think a lot of companies should embrace price matching, just like big retailers like Target, um, JCPenney, I don't know actually. I think Macy's price matches, I don't really know. But I think for makeup, I think it's important because I've had it happen where I'll go ahead and buy stuff for like 15% off on Macy's and then I'll get an Ulta coupon like the next day and it's 20% off and I'm like, fuck, like I can buy all this stuff at Ulta for 20% off, which is 5% more than what Macy's is giving me. So I think it's important for companies to price match. Like it's a very competitive market. I was so annoyed because at one point I had bought some stuff from Ulta and I called Alta customer service and I was like, look, I bought this stuff on like a Friday and by Sunday there was a 20% off coupon in my email. Will you just price match the 20% the off coupon? And they're like, oh, we're so sorry, like we can't do it. And I'm like, this is freaking ridiculous. Like you're competing with yourself. Like I'm not gonna not buy the stuff for 20% off. So. I literally had to return everything I bought and reorder it on the website so I could take advantage of 20% off. And I feel like it's silly. It should be simpler than that. It should just be a price match. But what do I know? Like, clearly, you know, brands haven't figured this stuff out. So maybe I'm totally off air with talking about this stuff. Okay, another thing I would like to change about brands in 2018 is offering better customer service. I do feel like a lot of brands 
you know, I remember when like Kylie Cosmetics first started or uh, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, like a lot of people were having a really hard time getting a hold of the brand, if their products were damaged, this, that, and the other. I have personally had some really good experiences. I just want to share, for example, I've had a few ColourPop products that have come broken and every time they either send me a replacement or send me um, the value of my product so I can repurchase the item, which I think is fantastic. I've had Alta send me stuff. If it's damaged, they'll just send you a replacement, which I think is awesome. I've seen it with Dose of Colors. Actually, Dose of Colors had amazing customer service. I know they had a huge launch with uh, Desi and Katie's line last year, and I actually placed an order, and I was in such a rush that I forgot to change my billing and shipping address to our new address because at the time we had moved to our new house and so my order went to my apartment which we didn't live in and I was like so upset and there was no way I could get it redirected to my house or anything so then it had to go back to Dose of Colors and they actually resent it out to me which I thought was wonderful and I think you know, every brand should do that for their customers because without your customers, you're not going to survive. So I think better customer service all around from big brands to small brands, I think it's very, very important. And I think that customers should, uh, you know, call for it. I think we need to expect good service from brands. I have written to brands where I never heard back and I don't think that's acceptable really if somebody is trying, a paying customer is trying to get in touch with you and ask you a question, I feel like you are responsible as a business owner to communicate with your customers. So that's just something I wish we could change about the beauty brands in 2018. Now as a influencer, there are some things I've been talking about, like I'd like brands to change, community to change, influencers to change. One thing I would like for influencers to change in 2018 is promoting shop hush and bad habit cosmetics or whatever the heck they're called. I get it. There's dupes and people rip off palettes all the time, but I feel like shop hush is really taking it to another freaking level. Um, the way I see it is if I'm going to put all my money and buy a designer purse and a company is making fake purses, that's going to really irk me because it's like, you know, it's you put all this money into it because it's an investment and somebody else is now ripping off that brand and ripping off your investment. It's like if somebody was, you know, able to duplicate a Chanel boy bag, all the other boy bags would seem a lot less special or all the other classic Chanel bags would seem a lot less special. So I don't know, I just think it's like such a rip on brands and I feel really bad that they are doing that to beauty brands, even though beauty brands are also really shady, so really like who's losing here? But I, I just don't get it. I don't know why influencers are promoting Shop Hush so hard and some of them are trying to be subtle about it and they're like, oh my god, they send me all these products and it's a dupe, but it's like if Kat Von D like sat you down and was like, hey, this is my palette, they ripped off my palette, and now you're promoting it on your channel. Like, would that, like, how would you feel ethically? Like, I feel like people are excusing it because it's like, oh, well, you know, we can't really afford the higher-end version, so we want to buy a dupe. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but first of all, Shop Hush came out of nowhere. They're very aggressively promoting their brand, which freaks me out because... I don't know what kind of concoctions they're using to make these makeup products, which that's not even the issue. Like, fine, whatever. Morphe makes really cheap stuff and it works for most people. Most people don't have a reaction to it. It's fine. But it's like, how can we, as a community, a beauty community, just sit and watch people's palettes get ripped off? Like, that's so messed up. But we'll complain if somebody's ripping off our videos or if somebody creates a fake account or all of this injustice in the world, but nobody thinks it's wrong for Shop Hush to clone palettes <laughs> and like literally exact same colors, layouts, 
and then they change the packaging. I feel like it's so weird. I feel like as a community, we shouldn't support it. If you can't afford high-end makeup, I, to I totally get it. It really sucks, but you can go on, you know, secondhand apps like Poshmark to buy your makeup because there's a ton of people selling gently used makeup or brand new makeup on there. You can strike a deal. You can trade. Um, maybe you can get together with some friends and buy a product together and share somehow. Like if it's your college roommate or something. There's always a way. I don't, I don't feel like it's that people can't afford like one eyeshadow palette. It's just that everyone wants like 80 eyeshadow palettes and that's where the problem is. I don't feel like anyone out there that really needs makeup doesn't have it. So yeah, I just don't get it. I think it's so wrong <laughs> that they're doing that. And I know like Makeup Revolution does that too. Um, but I just feel like Shop Hush and like Bad Habit or whatever they're called has been so aggressive. I've seen so much sponsored content from them. I just can't. I can't believe it. I think it's it's really bizarre to me. Okay, another thing I wish makeup brands would do more of in 2018 is of course create more permanent stuff. I feel like so much of makeup is limited edition these days and I kind of get it because it is one of those things where it is hard to keep people's attention span. Um, the world we live in, it's so hard because we're constantly being stimulated by so many different things. I mean, even me, I lose focus on a palette in like five seconds. I literally have to like be like, okay, I'm going to review this palette this week. So I'm going to play with just this palette. Plus when you have a big collection, you want to keep, you know, switching things up and things like that. But I do think either we should have a uh, more permanent, less limited edition, or we should have the option of if something's limited edition, but it does well, then we can see something being permanent. I feel like a lot of brands get shat on for doing that, but I do feel like generally there are some brands that didn't realize how well the product was going to do. For example, Colored Rain, Queen of Hearts, I don't think they thought that palette was going to take off the way it did. At the time that it came out, I thought it was a completely unique palette. Now can you find like 800 dupes for the Colored Rain palette? Probably, but uh, at the time you couldn't. And now on the opposite side, there's brands like Morphe that'll constantly say something is freaking limited edition so they can sell it. And then as soon as they see how good it's doing, how good it's doing, how good it's doing, they'll make it permanent. They did that with the Jaclyn Hill palette. They're doing that with their holiday, those like 15 pan, $15 eyeshadow palettes like I can't even. So I wish brands would be more conscious of doing stuff like that. Okay, and then the last thing I am hoping brands will ditch in 2018 are the weird themes. I feel like not even weird themes, but like the overdone themes. Like, So I wrote a list of things that I don't want to see anymore. So I, I don't want no more unicorns, no more peaches, no more brunch, no more movies, no more rainbows and no more mermaids like I think we've got up to here with all those themes um, and I believe Angelica did a similar video to this one and uh, it was really funny and she was just like I'm so sick of all these like repetitive themes which I totally get and then she was like you know why don't they do some geo themed palettes or just anything like anything else that not everyone is doing. I think that's where people are going to really stand out in this market. I feel like Too Faced is like the best example of overdoing a theme. They've done peach to death. Like I feel like at this point even peaches are like nope nope we don't want to be associated with that collection and they've done unicorn 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 unicorn. They just launched their festival palette which is basically another unicorn palette. Like why? why and rainbows like they literally like bunched everything up and like just threw it at the world and really hope it stuck but yeah I think at this point uh the market for makeup I think it's very wide um there's the younger population I feel like then there's people like my age where I'm like almost 30 but I feel like I can go either way like I can still do some crazy shit like wear blue highlight blue lip and like 
holographic like eye sparkles but there's times where I have to be professional so I think it can go either way so if you look at my eyeshadow collection I have crazy shit like I have I don't even know just like really colorful ridiculous palettes like all these dubious place ones are a little bit obnoxious like I can't wear this to a board meeting but I also have mature things like the Viseart neutral matte palette so I think I'm in that perfect range where I can go either way but there's also people older than me that have YouTube channels and a vi or audience so if I was a smart makeup brand I would make sure that I had different cat like product lines that cater to the mindset of these different women and I think as consumers we really need to take a look like when people were like oh my gosh I don't want to buy Kylie's diary after Kimberly Clark was like I'm a drag queen like he was a he's a drag queen that's like in his late 30s sorry Kimberly Clark I don't know how old you are he doesn't want to read Kylie's diary and neither do I like no so I think people like makeup brands what are we doing with our lives here? It's crazy. And I didn't even go to an Ivy League school and I feel like I've already made some really freaking good points about how we can change the beauty community and the beauty industry. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to cover in this video of things I want to change about the beauty community and the beauty industry in 2018. I would freaking love to hear you guys' thoughts on all of this. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to thumbs down this video, that's fine too, but I really don't know why you would watch it and then thumbs it down, like just don't watch it. I don't get it. Uh, anyway, the sass is out in full force today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for spending time with me. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>